Hi, it's Colin Coward. I started the volume to bring you some of the most authentic voices in sports. While you're here, make sure you hit subscribe. Thanks. I just want to throw this out there with the Raiders because I don't think they'll beat the Bengals. I think they're coming off a wildly emotional game. I think it's a big ask. But let's say, first of all, let's start with this. Your insider, or your guess on the Raiders head coach next season? That's a great question. So I call it the interim trap. Um, you get a bounce usually when you fire a coach in midseason. Players kind of like the interim and it helps. Let's face it. It helps the status quo if the interim gets elevated. He knows me. So then you kind of get seduced and it has not gone well most of the time. Mike Singletary was an interim. Hey, you know what? They're playing hard for him. It wasn't the right move. Tom Cable, the Raiders know this well, was an interim. Um, you get seduced by it and you don't think clearly. And and I usually don't like it. And especially in this case, because it's not like their interim was Gus Bradley. Well, he's been a head coach and this is his second time around or it's they basically said we want Gus Bradley and Greg Olson who are good coordinators doing good job to stay where they are so we're just going to have Rich Bisaccia you know the special teams guy oversee and I'm not I don't want to discount what he's done he's done something very good and he should get a lot of credit for it my instincts tell me Mark Davis wants rock star stuff in that stadium Mark Davis had a Russell Wilson kind of um you know, I don't not fixation, but he was kind of into that concept, I think, from what I was hearing. Uh, Mark Davis, I think, has felt we can do better than Derek Carr uh, and we can get back to him because you're bringing up a great point. His Derek Carr's clutch performances, not just this year, but over time, he's very, very dependable in the clutch. Um, so my instincts tell me that Mark Davis wants rock star and, you know, you, we hear the Harbaugh things and all that, but, um, and I usually don't like the interim trap that said, Hey, you know, you keep it rolling in the playoffs. At some point it's Steve Fisher. At some point you're like, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I, it works. I just don't have a choice, you know? So, it, and that was Pat Riley too, by the way, you know, Jack McKinney had a bike accident. It was horrible. And then, uh, oh, wait, maybe that was Paul Westhead. Excuse me. That was Paul Westhead uh, following Jack McKinney. But yeah, at some point, uh, you just, you know, you don't have a choice. Right now, they still have a choice. So I'm going to throw this at you. Um, ideally, GM, coach, players all get along. But when you watch the Michael Jordan documentary, it's not a necessity. <laughs> Shaq, Kobe, Phil Jackson. It's not a necessity. Right. KD, Draymond, Kerr. It's not a necessity. Not a necessity. Belichick, Brady, never had dinner. I don't buy that Chris Greer and Brian Flores didn't get along. My takeaway is it doesn't matter. He won eight of nine with Tua. Oh, by the way, so I'll throw my theory and you can shoot it down or agree. I don't care. So Brian Flores gets the job. He immediately, by the end of year one, the defense and special teams are excellent. All he needs, draft the right quarterback and give me a competent offensive line. Greer fails at both. Stories out that Jason Locke and Flora reported, Flores wanted Herbert, and it wasn't a secret. The GM wanted I him. I disagree with all of it. Okay, so what I'm saying is I'm defending Flores saying he doesn't have to get along with Greer. I don't care. If if I wanted Herbert and the GM wanted Tua and I fixed the defense and special teams immediately, I would be bitter. I wouldn't I I would I would agree if I believed that Flores wanted Herbert. So I'll I'll tell you what I have okay. come to learn and you know, first of all, Brian Flores is his own guy. He's not a Bill Belichick clone, but there's a lot of Bill Belichick in the way that he was trying to do it. And that works if you have Tom Brady. It works if you have a track record like Bill Belichick does. It has not gone well for the most part um, ever in any building or very rarely um, other than Belichick. 
Um, if you can't get along with Chris Greer, by the way, I'm saying that's you. He's probably the GM in the league who's the easiest person as a person to get along with. So this is what I believe. Um, and it's a weird organization with different power dynamics and an owner who's strong, but not always there. Um, I think that Brian Flores did a really good coaching job. And in a league where minority hiring is shameful, it's super disheartening to see a guy who did that well be let go abruptly. I believe that Brian Flores had the power in that building and that if he wanted Justin Herbert, there is zero chance Justin Herbert would not be a Miami Dolphin. So I don't, I, I think he wanted to and got to it, which doesn't make him, I, I wouldn't fire Brian Flores for that. You know, people make mistakes. That's a regrettable one, obviously, if it's Brian Flores. But I think that Brian Flores wanted Deshaun Watson. And I think Brian Flores wanted Tua, then wanted Deshaun Watson. And Chris Greer, for the most part, was doing for Brian Flores what he thought Brian Flores wanted. Doesn't mean Chris Greer hasn't made evaluation mistakes, but I don't think he was big-timing him. I think Flores had the power. And so, you know, a lot of times when people get let go and we don't understand it, and again, I don't want to, I don't want to discount the overtones on the minority hiring thing, because it really stings in this case. But let's compare it to say John Dorsey is out abruptly in Kansas City. What? Didn't he help Andy Reid build that thing? How is John Dorsey? Usually when I dig in on those things, the answer comes down to the person who got let go did a very bad job of managing his relationship with the owner. And and I would say Adam Gase did that too in Miami. Um, at some point, you don't have to be best friends with the owner. You don't have to be aligned on everything with the owner, but you have to understand what the owner expects and needs relationship wise, even if there are go-betweens. And I think if you come in acting like, Hey, I'm Bill Belichick and you know, I'm just uh, consumed with power and I'm not going to get along to get along. I'm just going to do what I do and people can like it or not. And the only thing that matters is if I win, um, you can get alienated from certain owners. And I, that's what I believe happened. I think Brian Flores is out because he had the power and didn't manage that situation well. Still regrettable from a minority hiring standpoint because he did a very good job as a coach. So um, this is an interesting time of the year. Jim Harbaugh called me the other day. I love and, it. And his dad had watched the show and told Jimmy should call me and thank him for nice things I said. So we talked for about five minutes. Nice. And he's got he's got a really cool setup at Michigan. His dad lives next door. So the kids leave the house, go right next door to grandpa. It's perfect. It's like he's Obama got, and the it's like Obama in the White House with <laughs> Michelle's mom. It's brilliant. So Michigan's rolling. They probably yep. won't beat Ohio State next year, but he's got Cade McNamara, the recruiting's rolling, and he's got a really good young staff. If he left, Michigan's in a tight spot. The hiring cycle is done. He's got some leverage. I look at all these jobs. They've all got major red flags. Raiders owner, Raiders GM. Uh, Denver doesn't have a quarterback, although I love their GM and I love their roster. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think Justin Fields is good. He was bad a lot and hurt a lot. What are you hearing on Harbaugh? This is where I lean into you. You know, Jim, you covered him. Yeah. I When I talked to him for five minutes, I didn't want to ask him straight out. I just tried to listen to his tone. Boy, the Michigan situation, Mike, is good. He's His wife's happy. His kids are happy. I just don't think there's the... Remember a few years ago, McCarthy gets Dallas. That's a great job. LaFleur gets Green Bay. That's a great job. Brandon Staley gets Justin Herbert. That's a great job. Yeah. I don't think any of these are a jobs. Okay, so a lot to unpack. Number one, he loves his alma mater as he should, and there is an emotional pull there, and, and as you said, some lifestyle things. Number two, yeah, maybe they leaned on him a little bit a year ago when they thought they had some leverage, and 
Jim's a competitive guy and maybe he's just leaning back and he'll extract his leverage uh, revenge, which is right. a strong word. And they'll give him a little more money or whatever security and it'll, it'll feel different. Um, the reason Jim Harbaugh is different from you and me, and we are people who have a strong sense of self collectively right. and individually. Yeah. Jim Harbaugh doesn't believe any job's a bad job because his sense of self is even stronger. He's like, I don't care. I'll win. He, I think he believes he could go to any job anywhere and affect change and win. And that's whether, whether you believe that or not as an outsider, the thing that makes Jim Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh is that thing. So I think in his heart, He's played in the NFL for a long time. I think most football people, if they're being honest, college is cool. There's an emotional attachment. It's not the same. It's not the highest level. The right. highest level of football is clearly the NFL, and it's not close. And for people who are that competitive and have that kind of sense of self, deep inside, Look, he went to the NFL. He during a lockout year, he took a losing team and got them to the brink of the Super Bowl. Then he got them to the brink of a championship. Then a Richard Sherman tip away from another shot at it. He lost to his brother. He lost the Super Bowl, a close Super Bowl to his brother. So knowing what I know about Jim Harbaugh, yes, all of that may be overridden by pragmatics or his love for his alma mater. It's all understandable. I just think deep inside he wants to go back to the biggest stage and finish what he almost did last time. 